Hi guys, it's me Quinn, and as always, if you appreciate my content, consider hitting the like button. It's the only way the YouTube algorithm really notices me. Just a heads up, this video will have spoilers for Six and Lo's Remembrance of Earth's Past trilogy. The Remembrance of Earth's Past trilogy is one of the most existentially terrifying book series I've ever read. The concepts explored in the books force us to consider our place within the cosmos. Part of what drives the human spirit forward is the belief that we can continue to learn more about the universe. The belief that we have boundless potential. Because from our perspective, the universe is mostly static. Its movements are on a scale in which humans can't truly comprehend. To us, it feels stable and eternal, infinite and unchanging. Of course, we know that if we look closely that none of this is true. The universe is a chaotic realm, constantly in motion. Its secrets are endless. In the first book in the series, The Three-Body Problem, Six and Lu introduces the concept of interdimensionality. It is greatly expanded upon in the third book, Death Sinned, and fully extrapolated upon in the spin-off novel, Redemption of Time by Beishu. In Death Sin, the crew of the ship Blue Space discover that there are dead zones in space, bubbles of space in which Trisolarian quantum entanglement could not penetrate. They come to understand the bubbles are warp points, essentially entry points into the fourth dimension. Though the mysterious phenomenon was an incredible discovery, there were also ominous undertones. Why are there bubbles at all? Why are there so many fourth dimensional fragments in three dimensional space? It's a great mystery. Captain, I think it's likely a dark secret. From within the fourth dimension, three dimensional space was laid out clearly and in exquisite overwhelming detail. In fact, it was impossible for the human brain to process the amount of information they were being visually exposed to from within the fourth dimension. But members of Blue Space's crew eventually learned to navigate the fourth dimension. The brain that had been adapted from birth to sense and feel three-dimensional space could not handle the infinite information generated by countless details, and initially information overload threatened to shut down processing. But the brain soon grew used to the four-dimensional environment, and without conscious thought it learned to ignore most details, leaving only the frames around objects. The crew of Blue Space eventually used their knowledge of the fourth dimension and their access to warp points to thwart a Sophon attack from the alien beings known as the Trisolarans. Humanity had never been as far out into space as the crew of Blue Space had ventured during their more than 2,000 year journey to the star system NH558J2. Eventually they realized the warp points themselves are fragments of the fourth dimension itself floating around in three dimensional space, though they still do not understand why. No other humans had ever studied this phenomenon, though it was possible that humans could have encountered fourth dimensional space but not realized. Do you think we'll encounter more in the future? I think there's an even more interesting question. Have we encountered them before? Think about the Earth. It's been careening through space for several billion years. Is it not possible that it had entered a fourth dimensional fragment in the past? The crew of Blue Space eventually do journey deep into the fourth dimension, approaching a giant ring, a remnant of some ancient long gone civilization. After deciphering the language of the crew, it is able to communicate with them. Ominously, it calls itself a tomb. Whose tomb is this? The tomb of those who created it. Is it a spaceship? It used to be a spaceship, but now it's dead, and so it's a tomb. Who are you? Who is conversing with us? I am the tomb. It is the tomb speaking to you. I'm dead. You mean, you're a ship whose crew died? In other words, you're the control system for the ship. There was no reply to this. We can see many other objects in this region of space. Are they also tombs? Most of them are tombs. The others will be tombs soon. I don't know them all. Are you from far away? Or have you always been here? I am from far away. They are also from far away from different places far away. Where? There was no answer. 
From their conversation with the thing referring to itself as a tomb, they are given information about the twisted nature of the universe, but they don't initially process what they are told. The fourth dimension in which it resided had once been a sea, but now it was a puddle. The sea had dried up. The tomb was there amongst so many other tombs, and soon to be tombs, because just as fish must gather into puddles to survive in a drying sea, so must they. But it was the next part of the communication that was the most important, more important than anything else. Some had begun to hope that the so-called dark forest state of the universe was not persistent throughout the entirety of the cosmos. What the tomb said next would shatter those hopes. The puddle is also drying. All the fish are going to disappear. Are all the fish here? The fish responsible for drying the sea are not here. We're sorry, what you said is really hard to understand. The fish who dried the sea went on to land before they did this. They moved from one dark forest to another dark forest. The fragments of the fourth dimension existed throughout three-dimensional space for one simple reason. All of space had once been fourth dimensional, but it too had been a dark forest. Any intelligent life that made itself known was wiped out. But according to the tomb, those who had destroyed the fourth dimension would not meet the same fate as the tombs, for they had moved from the fourth dimension into the third. The fish that had dried the sea had crawled out onto land before doing so. We later discovered that the universe at its birth had in fact been ten-dimensional. The speed of light then had been close to infinity. Light back then was capable of action at a distance and could go from one end of the cosmos to the other within Planck time. If you had ever been to fourth dimensional space, you would have some vague hint of how beautiful that ten-dimensional garden must have been. The endless wars in the dark forest had caused one dimension after the other to be imprisoned from the macroscopic into the microscopic, each time reducing the speed of light. Within the dark forest, one of the ways for advanced civilizations to eliminate an enemy is through a dimension strike, which causes the space around it to collapse into lower dimensions. The problem is, dimensional collapse never ends. It continues to expand until everything collapses. There is no way to stop a dimension strike once activated. So like the dimensions before it, the third dimension was also collapsing and could not be stopped. So eventually the entire universe would collapse into a single dimension and all life would cease to be. Humanity never got the opportunity to see the actual universe in its original state, and never would. And in the end, nothing would be preserved. This idea seems sad, and it is, and yet, everything dies, everything is forgotten. Why should the universe be any different? There is a kind of grand sense of final equality that this idea invokes. All of us, every soul who ever lived throughout the cosmos, all meet at the end in darkness. Thanks for watching guys, make sure you like and subscribe for more Quinn's ideas.